tests and diagnosis for psoriasis. Since other inflammatory diseases of the skin, like eczema, can be confused with psoriasis, it is important that a board-certified dermatologist makes the diagnosis. Physical Examination The dermatologist will examine the outer arms, legs and scalp. The nails need to be examined because there may be visible pits in the nails that appear much like hammered brass when the disease is flared or active. In addition, the tongue may manifest as a geographic tongue, which has white scale in a ring-like pattern. Typically, a thorough physical examination of the scalp, skin and nails is enough to make an accurate diagnosis. Although the size of an individual lesion may vary from pinpoint to over 20 cm in diameter, the outline of the lesion is usually circular, oval or polycyclic, derived from several smaller units or with many sides. Psoriasis lesions characteristically have a very sharp border and do not fade into normal skin like other inflammatory skin rashes. In addition, psoriatic lesions are sometimes surrounded by a pale blanching ring, which is commonly referred to as a worn-off ring. The surface of psoriasis plaques at times can be removed. When this happens, a characteristic hospice sign is observed, which refers to a collection of pinpoint bleeding skin biopsy. A skin biopsy may be necessary if the dermatologist is considering other similar inflammatory skin rashes, such as eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, dermatomyositis, lichen planus, pityriasis rosea or tinea corporis, ringworm. After a local anesthesia injection with lidocaine, to numb the skin, and epinephrine, to control bleeding, a plastic device is used to remove 3 to 4 millimeters of skin. Many times a simple stitch or two is necessary, which will need to be removed in two weeks. The tissue is then examined under a microscope by a dermatopathologist to confirm the diagnosis. The psoriasis area and severity index. Because the percentage of body surface area is important in regards to deciding which treatment would be appropriate for each individual patient, a scale for measuring the number and thickness of psoriasis plaques was developed. The most widely used measuring scale is called the POSI score. This stands for Psoriasis Area and Severity Index. These scores can be used in both clinical and research settings. Other tests Radiographs assessing for joint disease may be useful in patients also suffering from psoriatic arthritis. Blood testing for inflammatory markers, such as a CRP or ESR level, may also be helpful. A rheumatologist typically makes this diagnosis because he or she studies autoimmune diseases that affect the joints. It will then be necessary to determine a treatment regimen, which many times involves both topical creams, lifestyle and diet changes and possibly systemic oral or injectable medication, depending upon the severity of the condition. Many times collaboration with both the dermatologist and rheumatologist is necessary for optimal patient outcome. Causes, Risk Factors and Prevention of Psoriasis With normal, unaffected skin, the body takes 28 to 30 days to create new skin cells and shed dead ones. But when you have plaque psoriasis, your immune system is overactive, causing skin cells to be pushed to the skin's surface in approximately 3 to 4 days. However, your body can't keep up with this rate of production. So while new skin cells are being produced, dead skin cells pile up on top of each other. This creates thick, red, itchy, flaky patches known as plaques. The Role of Genetics Psoriasis occurs in increased frequency in some families. When it comes to children developing psoriasis, a large German survey found that if both parents were affected with psoriasis, the risk for the child developing the disorder was up to 50%. But if only one parent was affected, the risk was 16%. Likewise, if one sibling was affected, the risk was 8%. Based upon the analysis of family pedigrees, a polygenic, or one that involves many genes, inheritance provides the best model for the complex genetics of psoriasis. There's also evidence that genetic factors play a role in the clinical course or psoriasis. The SIR1 gene is considered a major gene that's involved in up to 50% of patients with psoriasis. Psoriasis as an autoimmune disease. 
Autoimmune diseases occur when the body's immune system accidentally attacks and destroys healthy body tissue. There are more than 80 types of autoimmune diseases, including plaque psoriasis. In psoriasis patients, the T cells attack healthy skin cells. They trigger an immune response that leads to blood vessel dilation in the skin around the plaques and an increase in white blood cells in the outer layer of skin. This results in an increased production of healthy skin cells, T cells and white blood cells. The ongoing cascade of new skin cells moves to the outermost layer in days rather than weeks. Dead skin and white blood cells do not slough off quickly enough and therefore build up into thick, scaly patches on the skin surface. Potential Triggers Triggering factors can be both external, those that directly interact with the skin, and internal or systemic, which can elicit psoriasis in genetically predisposed patients. Here are a few of the most common. 1. Stress. Additionally, environmental factors, including infection, drugs, trauma, weather changes, obesity and stress, play an important role in the development of psoriasis. Severe emotional stress tends to aggravate psoriasis in almost half of those patients studied. Exacerbations of psoriasis typically occur a few weeks to months after a stressful life event. Additionally, in pregnancy, psoriasis symptoms can improve. However, after childbirth, there's a tendency for it to get worse. 2. Alcohol consumption, smoking and obesity. Obesity, alcohol consumption and smoking have also been associated with psoriasis. Smoking plays a role in the onset of psoriasis, while obesity appears to be a result of psoriasis. The relationship between alcoholism and psoriasis is likely due to the psychological effects of the patient and psoriasis. And excess weight increases the risk of psoriasis, as plaques often develop in skin folds. 3. Infections Infections, particularly bacterial, may induce or flare psoriasis. This has been observed in approximately 45% of psoriatic patients. Beta-hemolytic strep especially manifesting a strep throat, is the most common offender. Additionally, dental abscesses, perianal cellulitis and impetigo can flare psoriasis. These types of infections typically manifest themselves in the form of gumdrop psoriasis. This type of psoriasis is common in childhood and teenagers. Similarly, patients with HIV have higher rates of psoriasis. Less commonly, sinus, respiratory, Gastrointestinal or genitourinary tracts may be responsible for disease flare. 4. Skin Trauma Trauma to the skin like a scrape, bite or sunburn can trigger psoriasis. This is called the Kogner phenomenon. It is observed in approximately 25% of patients with psoriasis. Other forms of skin injuries, such as sunburn, drug eruptions or viral rashes, can also induce psoriasis. The lag time between the trauma and the appearance of the skin lesion is usually 2 to 6 weeks. 5. Certain Drugs There are several drugs that induce psoriasis, including, lithium, used to treat bipolar disease, interferon, used for immune system regulation, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, used for hypertension, terbinafine, used for fungal infections, and anti-malarials used to treat infection and for autoimmune diseases. Rapid tapers of oral steroids, prednisone, may induce pustular psoriasis as well as flares of plaque psoriasis. That is why it is very important to be aware of the effects of these medications on one's psoriasis before starting any of them. Drugs and Treatment for Psoriasis There are a variety of topical treatments and systemic therapies available to help treat psoriasis. Long-term management of psoriasis requires individualization of therapy, taking into account the extent of the disease, the patient's perception of the severity and the potential side effects of the treatments. The chronic nature of the disease necessitates adoption of a long-term approach while avoiding dramatic short-term fixes that may produce a more reactive disease state. It is often necessary to combine treatments for psoriasis patients. There is a need for new therapies and these will eventually come with recent and future medical advances. Approximately 40% of patients reported frustration with the ineffectiveness of their current treatment. Topical Treatments 
while there is no cure, current treatments may offer significant relief. The primary goal of treatment is to regulate or stop the skin cells from growing and exfoliating too quickly while reducing inflammation. Topical treatments, medications applied to the skin, are usually the first method used to help relieve skin symptoms. There are several topical treatments for psoriasis that have been shown to be effective. While many can be purchased at your local drugstore, others require a prescription. Topical prescription steroid creams work well for mild, limited cases. As anti-inflammatory agents, they reduce the swelling and redness of skin lesions. Secondly, vitamin D3 analogs, or calcipotrine, affect skin cell differentiation through the regulation of epidermal responsiveness to calcium, crude coal tar, antralin, tazerotin or retinoic acid, topical vitamin A preparations, and salicylic acid are all anti-inflammatory topical treatments that regulate cell turnover and can also be beneficial in the treatment of psoriasis. Over-the-counter topicals come in many forms. Salicylic acid and coal tar are the two active ingredients approved by the FDA for the treatment of psoriasis. Products that contain aloe vera, jojoba, zinc pyrithione and capsaicin are used to moisturize and soothe irritated skin and potentially remove scales or relieve itching. Sunlight therapy. Sunlight therapy involves exposing your skin to small amounts of natural sunlight for approximately 20 minutes per day depending upon time of year and distance from the equator. And it may help improve psoriasis symptoms, as UV light is anti-inflammatory in small doses. There are also many indoor sources, including monitored phototherapy units, which emit a specific type of UV light that has been shown to be more effective. These sessions can occur in the home or at the dermatologist's office. It is important to note that these wavelengths of light are not found in your local tanning bed facility. The lights in tanning beds are not regulated and may result in sunburn, which can trigger a psoriasis outbreak. It is very important not to sunburn if you have psoriasis. Ultraviolet light A, UVA, also in sunlight, is another option for sunlight therapy. But unlike UVB, UVA needs to be used with a light-sensitizing medication, seralin given either topically or orally. This process, called PUVA, slows down excessive skin cell growth and can clear psoriasis symptoms for varying periods of time. PUVA is most beneficial for those with stable plaque psoriasis, guttate psoriasis and psoriasis of the palms and soles. The treatment is not without side effects, though, and can cause nausea, itching and redness of the skin. Ginger can help with the nausea and antihistamines, oatmeal baths or topical capsaicin products may relieve itching. Try compression hose for swollen legs caused by standing during PUVA treatment. Photochemotherapy with ultraviolet light and the ingestion of seralin or topical seralin for moderate to severe psoriasis is highly effective. This can be performed with different wavelengths of light, such as narrowband UVB. Finally, the eczema laser can be used to target smaller or a limited number of psoriatic plaques. This laser is found at your local dermatologist's office and may be covered by insurance in many cases. Systemic medications. Systemic treatments affect the entire body, not just the skin. Biologic agents for moderate to severe psoriasis include Atanercept, Anbro, Adalimumab, Humira, and Ustekinumab, Stellara. These have dramatic responses to both psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. These are expensive agents, but are quite good for cases with significant skin involvement or for patients with comorbidities like psoriatic arthritis. Tuberculosis skin testing and hepatitis B titers are required prior to initiation of therapy. During the course of therapy labs are typically monitored which include complete blood counts and liver function tests until the medication is well tolerated and the lab values are stable. These medications lower one's immune system and slightly increase the risk of developing lymphoma. These agents are injected into the subcutaneous tissue either at home or at the dermatologist's office. Methotrexate, which blocks DNA synthesis, still remains a viable option for patients. This medication is either taken by mouth or injected into the skin by the patient. However, 
it is important to rule out liver or kidney disease prior to initiation. In addition, methotrexate increases one's risk of developing skin cancer. Thus, patients with a strong personal or familial risk of skin cancers should reconsider this treatment option. New oral small molecule treatments have emerged that can selectively target molecules inside immune cells. These treatments slow overactive immune responses and target inflammation within the cell. This lessens the redness and scaliness of plaques and relieves joint tenderness and swelling. Aprem Elast, Otesla, is the newest prescription oral medicine approved for the treatment of adult patients with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis slash arthritis. Aprem Elast treats psoriatic arthritis by inhibiting an enzyme that controls much of the inflammation within cells. Visit the website. Click below. I hope you enjoyed our review. If you would like to order this product or see further details, then simply head over to the website address you see on the screen right now.